from Stag and today we're in the southern part of Singapore, Teluk Blanga and I believe this is the very first time we're doing an insider tour in this neighbourhood. Now a modern residential town, this neighbourhood is steeped in Singapore history and has certainly come a long way considering how it was once home to Orang Lawut and even infested with pirates at some point. In the last half a decade, there have been newer HDBs that have been popping up in this area amidst the old ones, with some of them recently reaching their MOP. So for today's tour, we thought we'll change things up a little. We have two homeowners who very kindly opened up their homes for us to tour. The first one is located in an older estate, perhaps the first HDB that was built in this area back in 1978, which is Blanga View. And the second will be located at Teluk Blanga Park View, which will MOP in 2022. So I'm really excited to see what has evolved over time and how each homeowner has designed their space to suit their respective lifestyles. We've got lots to cover today, so let's begin the tour. So the first unit we'll be taking a look at today will be a five-room flat that's located here in Blanga View. Blanga View is sandwiched between Teluk Blanga Heights and Teluk Blanga Drive. It TOP'd in 1978 and it was actually one of the first flats built here in this neighbourhood. There are a total of 12 blocks, 1,550 units, ranging from 3, 4, 5 room and executive flats. For a development this old, it's actually pretty well landscaped with large open patches of grass separating the blocks from each other. With regards to facilities, there is a decent sized playground and two badminton courts. And now that we're almost here at the block, let's go take a look at the unit. So before we begin the tour, let me give you some specs about this unit. This is a 1,292 square feet, 5 room flat. The homeowners purchased it in 2021 for $655,000 and spent 90k on renovations. They have moved at least 8 times, so most of the elements in this home are based on their previous learnings from staying in different types of homes, including one which is landed. But for now, let's start off the tour at the entryway. As soon as you enter the home, you'll be greeted by this entryway. This entryway was purchased by the previous owner, so the main entrance door used to be right here. You can see that the home did gain a decent amount of space. This is also great because it means that your main entrance door doesn't open up right into your living room. Moving on to the living room, you can immediately see the sheer size of this home. There is an oversized L-shaped couch here that fits in here comfortably. And I've noticed the use of different coloured vinyl tones on the floor to demarcate the space as opposed to using a rug. I do also want to point out this partition wall over here. So this used to be one big open space, but the homeowners decided to put in a partition wall to separate the living and dining areas. This would also act as a TV feature wall. This balcony acts as an extension of the living room space. There are additional seating options for when guests do come over. And with the amount of natural light that comes into the space, I can imagine this place being really good for reading, accompanied by the collection of home plants that the homeowner has. So before we take a look at what's behind the partition wall, let us head into the kitchen. The kitchen is separated by this sliding door. It is an L-shaped kitchen with additional countertop space that's purchased off the rack from the IKEA over here. There is a standalone fridge right at the entrance and a good amount of countertop and storage spaces. This is a two burner gas hob with a sink on the opposite end and I've also noticed that the backsplash over here is made of glass which makes it very easy to maintain and clean especially if you're one to do heavy cooking. This section we have the service yard where we'll find the washer and as with older developments we have the chute in the unit itself as well. Before we exit the kitchen you'll be able to find the common bathroom. It is pretty standard in size in a unit of an older development, but what I do like would be that feature wall over there. Behind this partition wall, there is a dedicated space for dining. It is a huge, generous amount of space. It currently has a six-seater set that is right here, but I feel like you could even go up to an eight or ten-seater if you wish. Behind me, I do want to point out this beautiful oversized painting as well, which I feel really helps to pull this space together. 
Another interesting element that I do want to point out would be this feature, lights. So the homeowners and designers took a long time to find a light that could fit nicely under this concrete beam. And behind the feature TV wall that we saw earlier, we have additional storage. I have to say, this is extremely practical. At the end of the dining area, you'll be able to find this oversized built-in day bed with storage below. This spot will be great for lounging around or just for quiet reading. And along this wall over here, you'll be able to find the entrances to the bedroom. The doors are all frameless and flush to the wall, making it look visually clean. Heading into the common bedroom, you can see that this room is finished in a different style from the rest of the house. It is a very decent sized room and fits a lot. We've got a queen size bed, a wardrobe, a couch and even a study desk over here. And as with the rest of the house, this room does let in a lot of natural sunlight. And now let's take a look at the other rooms in the house. So this door leads you into what was previously a common space, but now has been converted into a study. It is also linked to the master bedroom over here. And this space now is big enough for a two-person work setup, as well as a bookshelf on the other end. And heading into the master bedroom, there is a dedicated wardrobe space over here with three panel wardrobes on both ends. The room is very spacious and it fits a queen size bed with two bedside tables. I do also really like how they've retained the original parquet flooring. It does add softness and warmth to the room. And here we have the master bathroom, which is a similar style to what we saw earlier. This time the bathroom is larger with a dedicated shower area. And once again, we have that nice feature wall over here. Since the homeowners have moved eight times before, we thought we'll ask them what is one thing that they implemented in this home that they didn't do in their previous homes. And they pointed out their main door digital lock set. So previously, they've always been using traditional manual locks, but their designer recommended for them to use a digital lock set this time and has brought about huge convenience to them. The one that they have here is the Mortise 2 from Igu Home. It can be installed not only on brand new doors, but also on old existing doors. In the case of this homeowner, installation and setup all took under an hour. There are four modes of access, Bluetooth, PIN codes, RFID tags, and physical keys which is something that the homeowners really appreciate as each of them have their own preferred way of accessing their home. We've seen igloo homes being used in many of the homes that we've featured in the past. So if you do want to find out more, we're going to leave a link in the description box below. And now that we've seen this unit, we'd like to thank the homeowners for opening up their home to us. For now, let's head on to the next development. So as we're approaching Teluk Wanga Park View, you can see it's just right behind me. Before we head into the development, I just want to share with you some rich history about this place. So its name was derived from Malay words Langa, which means a type of cooking pot, and Teluk means bay. So putting them together, it literally means cooking pot bay, and it is named on account of the shape of this estate. Teluk Vanga is also known in Hokkien as, I'm so sorry, I think I'm going to butcher this, Sit Lap Meng, which is also known as Singapore Gate or Northwest Gate. So this area used to house several villages, with the prominent ones being the Chinese village called Hip Guan San and the Malay village called Kampong Jago. The shoe brand Bata, which also used to operate its factory here at number 66 Teluk Blanga back here in 1964. And you won't believe this, but before the war, there was even an opium factory over here. So opiums were processed in Teluk Blanga before being sent to Pasir Panjang for packing and sales. Who would have thought? But enough of the history lesson, now let's continue with our tour. So this next unit that we're taking a look at will be a four-room flat here in Teluk Blanga Park View. This estate is bounded by Teluk Blanga Heights and Teluk Blanga Street 31. This estate has lush greenery views as it is right next to Teluk Blanga Hill. It TOP'd in 2017 and will MOP in the later part of 2022. 
So it consists of seven 30-storey blocks, 1,480 units, ranging from studio, three and four room flats. With regards to facilities, there is a commercial podium, two children's playgrounds, three adult and elderly fitness corners, there are rooftop gardens above the two multi-storey car parks, and on top of Block 92, which houses more social and community facilities. And now that we're almost here at the block, let's go take a look at the unit. Specs about this unit, this is a 1,001 square feet 4-room HDB. The homeowner spent 45k in renovations. They didn't get an ID, but instead they designed it themselves and appointed a main contractor. But for now, let's start off at the main entryway. You'll notice that they're using a digital lock here as well. And right next to the main entrance, there are these built-in cabinets that serve as a shoe rack. And we have the DB box that is concealed within here too. What I like would be this display section with the black metal grate door. And this will be a recurring design element that we can see in other parts of the home. Moving on to the kitchen. The kitchen wall over here was taken down to create an open kitchen concept. And one of the first things that I've noticed would be this floor. So it is a mixture of cement screed that's accented by these Spanish pattern tiles. Something else that is really eye-catching would be this kitchen backsplash. So this is actually a partition wall that is cut and painted to look like a concrete wall. And the bolts were later added on to complete the look. So I thought it was really cool that the homeowners decided to put in so much detail in a kitchen backsplash. Connected to the kitchen, there is a service yard over here which is pretty standard in size as compared to the newer HDBs. The homeowner hasn't made much changes over here. So this place fits a washer and they do also have the Stygian drying rack. As the homeowner mentioned that this area doesn't get much sun, so the heat blower on the drying rack really does come in handy. Right in front of the kitchen, we have the dining table. The homeowners did think about having a kitchen island or a taller bar counter over here. However, they opted for a standard height, loose dining table instead. This is a customized six-seater table. And if we take a look over here, the grated metal is the same as what we saw in the entryway. And this tabletop over here will be the same quartz that's used in the kitchen. And one more thing, take a look at these pendant lights. So these operate on a pulley and you're able to adjust the height. How cool is that? Moving on to the living room, it fits a standard three-seater sofa with enough space for a coffee table and TV console. And if you do look up at the ceiling, you'll notice that the electrical points are all intentionally left exposed with black conduits. And this further enhances the whole industrial feel to this space. So this unit is actually pretty breezy and that might be because we're pretty near the waters. Gilman Barracks is actually located right behind that forest and we can even see interlays in the distance. So the homeowner shared with us that that open field right there is fairly well utilised. We have residents lazing around, kids running about, and even people walking their dogs at different times of the day. But for now, let's head on to the rooms. The common bedroom number one has been converted into a multi-purpose room. And one of the main changes that you'll notice over here is that this wall has been hacked to make way for these half-height windows as the homeowner wanted to let in more natural light into the common areas. Since the pandemic, this room has been heavily used as the homeowner uses this as her study, bike storage, and there's even a little tea corner that's over here. And here is the other common bedroom which has been converted into a full-fledged walk-in wardrobe. Should the needs of the owner change in future, this space can certainly comfortably fit a queen-size bed. So before we head out, I just want to highlight one thing. This is a hygrometer and it is a device that is used to measure humidity. The homeowner has shared with us that because we're so near to the water and forest, the humidity level here tends to be pretty high and her leather items tends to get damaged. So they've installed this dehumidifier over here to tackle that problem. So for future residents, you might want to take note of that. 
Right across from the common bedroom, we have the common bathroom. So no major renovation works were carried out here, except for overlaying these new tiles over the default HDB feature wall. And finally, the master bedroom. So you can immediately tell how spacious this room is. There is a king-size bed over here, but still a generous amount of space around the sides. And this is partially due to the fact that there's no need for a wardrobe in this room. I do also really like the two hanging pendant lights that's on both sides of the bed. It just creates this very nice ambient lighting in this room. And on this end, we have the master bathroom right behind this barn door. Unlike the common bathroom that we saw earlier, this master bathroom has been completely revamped. And I do like the grey pattern tiles that we see over here. What I do also enjoy would be the little details that the homeowners have put in even above eye level. Over here, there is a customized vanity. And right above, there are these industrial lights that I feel just tie in to the rest of the home. So we asked the homeowners what advice that they can give to future home buyers and they shared that you shouldn't be afraid to manage your own project if you have the means to. Secondly, don't rush into setting up the space. Don't buy everything as soon as you move in. It's only after some time when you will know what is a want and what is a need. So once again, a very huge thank you to the homeowners for opening up their home to us. It was such a joy touring this unit. For now, let's head on downstairs to wrap up this episode. And now that we've seen both Blanga View and Telok Blanga Park View, as well as a unit in each, we've finally come to the end of the tour. So let us know in the comments down below which one of the two developments or units you prefer and why. So personally for me, I'm an oldie at heart, so I do like how the older HDB unit such as the one in Blanga View has a larger living space. For those of you who are interested, I'll pop in the unit mix and price for both developments over here. And of course, since Teluk Langa Park View has yet to MOP, the prices are not applicable for now. For those of you who want to read more about both developments, you can head on over to stackedhomes.com editorial. And if you want us to feature your development or home, you can drop us a DM on our Instagram profile. And as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment and hit that notification bell for updates on future videos. That's all that we have for you today. We'll see you in the next one.